are taters. That's for you, booger mom. And Lily! <laughs> I love it. <laughs> hey everybody, welcome to today's vlog. Lily Mae is absolutely beautiful. She's amazing. It's been so much fun having a brand new tiny little baby at home with us. She is absolutely perfect in every way and we just love her so much. And then Sophia, you know, she's kind of doing the um, regressing thing where she thinks she's a baby now and she's been running around with a pacifier in her mouth and a bottle in her mouth. And she's been trying to climb in the bassinet and just being a little rascal as always. Um, but I'm definitely going to update you guys on the girls, how they're doing, how I'm doing ever since I gave birth. And uh, give you a big update about all of those things on the next vlog. This vlog, I actually wanted to talk to you guys about my experience in the hospital. Now, at the end of the last video, I told you guys that I wanted to tell you the horror story that was my birth experience. Um, the hospital that we were at is Grandview and it is on 280 in the Birmingham area. And it was an absolute nightmare. Um, there was so many bad things that happened that I literally one night, it was like 1.30 in the morning, two o'clock in the morning, I'm exhausted. And I sat up on my phone in the notes section and I just wrote down like everything, like all the things that had gone wrong and all the things about this experience that were just terrible. Um, it was so much, so I printed it all out, like my entire, like just step by step what happened. And I'm gonna share with you guys what happened to us. It was bad, so bad. <laughs> of course the baby starts crying right when I sit down to do a vlog. That's the story of my life. She just woke up. Say hello everybody. Look how old she is. She's a three week old now. Hi. Say hello to everybody, Lily Bean. Look, isn't she beautiful? Mm -hmm. Mwah, she's perfect. She's my perfect little baby. Everybody's been telling me that she looks like me. It's good. It was about time I got one. Oh. We'll let you have that for right now, okay? And then I'll give you a whole bottle when Mommy gets done vlogging. If you'll cooperate, we'll see. Okay, so we'll start with the first the first day we get there. Okay, so um, I, if you watched the birth vlog that we did, um, you know, I was doing contractions all that night. We finally went to the doctor at like six o'clock in the morning. So right when we get in, um, you know, they check me, make sure that I'm gonna stay, um, say that, okay, yes, you are in labor, all that stuff, and then uh, we go into like the room. Okay, so after we get into the room that I'm gonna be in, these two nurses come in. I'm literally having contractions and they're so bad at this point. We're waiting for the guy to come in to give me the epidural. The one nurse, um, there's like a, a real skinny one and kind of a bigger girl. So I'm just, that's how I remember them. I'm like the bigger girl. She's asking me in the middle of a contraction what I'm gonna do with my placenta. And she's trying to tell me like, um, you know, the benefits of donating it. And she's like pushing me to donate. She's like pushing me to donate my placenta. And okay, I've never even thought about what I was gonna do with my placenta. I like hadn't even, that hadn't even crossed my mind. So I'm literally in the middle of like this excruciatingly painful contraction. And I'm like, oh, and I'm literally like moaning in pain. Okay, I'm like, oh, like this. And the lady is talking over, she raises her voice to talk over me. Like she couldn't wait. Like, lady, you can't wait and let me get done with this contraction to finish your sentence. You have to raise your voice to talk over my moaning and me in pain asking me to sign something about my placenta. And I was just like, no, get away. Like get, I was so like, uh, just turned off by that experience. After that, that lady was a, B-I-T-C-H to me the rest of the day. She did not like me at all. But I mean, come on lady, I'm like in pain here. Like, give me a minute. Anyway, I did not like that. I did not like that nurse at all. So then the epidural comes in and the other nurse, the skinny one, she goes to put in a catheter. Is that what it's called? The you pee in the bag, whatever. And come to find out later, she, she's having trouble. Okay, she had trouble getting my the needle in my IV in my hand. I think she was new, and the big girl was like her 
was like overseeing her or something. I don't know. But I'm like, why are y'all letting her do this? I, I already don't have my doctor. My doctor's not on call. And now I've got a brand, a newbie nurse that can't put my IV in right. Now she's going to be the one that puts my catheter in. I'm like, oh my God. So it t it's taken a really long time. And by this time I have the epidural, so I'm numb. But come to find out later on that she has messed me up and now I had to have stitches in my pee hole. That might be TMI, but I mean, ugh, she didn't get my cat. She couldn't get my catheter in right. Like she's she messed up my she messed me up. Okay, so don't like her either. She, I mean, she was nice enough. I didn't know till later on that she messed me up, but now I don't like her at all either. So, okay, now to my notes. Okay, so we, as soon as we get back to the room or whatever, like it's time we can order some food. Cause you know, they wouldn't let me eat that morning. So I'm starving. I didn't eat the night before thinking I was going to go in. I mean, I'm like starving to death. And, um, so at like 1230, I order food, we order food and we called down there to order it. And they said, um, that we should have ordered before 10 AM and that the guy that did, this is at 1230, this is right at lunchtime. And she says that, um, the cook is on break and said, oh, but we'll take your order. We'll get you some food eventually. We'll get you some food eventually. That's what they told me. I just come out of labor. I'm starving and they won't bring me food. Now y'all remember Corey's in here. We're like, once he, once we enter, we can't leave. So he's not allowed to leave the hospital to go, to go get me something to eat. Um, we're just not allowed because of the pandemic. We weren't allowed to leave once we were in. Okay, so finally 2.30 comes around and we get cold food. <laughs> and it was the wrong thing. So what we ordered, cause you know, you gotta put an order. It wasn't even the correct order. Not one time this entire two days I was stuck at this hospital did they get our order right. Okay, so finally we get lunch, 2.30, it's cold, it's wrong. We took our dinner order the same time as our lunch. They brought us dinner at 4.30. And then said so that we, and then we're like, okay, like we just had lunch, we're not gonna eat it. So now this is cold too. And then we're like, don't worry about it. We'll just order like pizza or something up here and you can just walk outside and get it. So seven o'clock comes around and I'm like, I'm so hungry now. <laughs> I want something to eat, like some real food. And we asked the nurse if we can order pizza. She's like, no, he's not allowed to walk out of the door. Or if he does, he won't be able to come back in tonight. Okay, great. We go hungry. We literally go hungry that night. So no food the first night. The next morning, you know, we've been up all night, just so tired, I'm miserable. Um, there's no toilet paper in our bathroom. Corey needs to go to the bathroom. I'm having to use like the spray bottle and the pads and all this stuff. But our toilet paper, it's like there's toilet paper in the thing, but you can't get to it. It's inaccessible. So we call and we're like, hey, we need some toilet paper to our room. Okay, no problem. The whole night goes by, no toilet paper. So we call again that morning. Hey, can we get some toilet paper to our room? Sure, no problem. Be right in there. Nothing. 8.30 comes around. They bring breakfast. I get breakfast. Corey, unfortunately, he, his order didn't get heard, I guess. We ordered it, but they didn't bring it. So, 8.30, I get um, biscuits and gravy and some milk and some fruit or something. I take a bite of my biscuit and gravy. I go to open my little box of milk, go to drink it. Chunks in my milk. Oh, like... I'm gonna throw up thinking about it. That is like, if you know me, I don't even drink milk like a week before the expiration because that is like my fear in life is to get chunky milk. And this, these people just served me chunky milk. I hadn't eaten in like two days at this point. And what I had eaten, it was terrible. And now you're gonna bring me old milk while I'm sitting here trying to feed my baby, like exhausted. Oh my God, oh my God. Corey, he's starving. I'm, I've lost my appetite. Cause now I think, okay, you're gonna serve me old milk. Then you're putting old milk in the food too. Like I'm literally gagging over my breakfast when I drink this chunky milk. And then, uh, and then 9.30, an hour and a half rolls by. They finally bring Corey some food and it's cold and wrong. Every single meal was cold and wrong. Then, um, <laughs> then it's 9.30 and Corey's like, I gotta go to the bathroom. Still no toilet paper. Call him again. Can I please get some toilet paper? And by this time, I'm out of pads too. Y'all know what it's like if you've had a baby. You are like bleeding and it is a big experience every time you go to the bathroom. I had to sit, I had to pee and I like didn't want to go pee without being able to like change my pads out and everything. Didn't even want to go in there until I had everything I needed, you know. 
And uh, so I call there and I'm like, can we please get some toilet paper? And I said, can we please get some pads? And y'all, I'm being really nice, like way nicer than I should have been. But these people are taking, you know, my baby's here. We're trying to keep the peace. I'm being like way nicer than I should have been. But um, they said, sure, no problem. Bring some pads and toilet paper. Okay. 30 minutes go by and I call again and I'm like, I am bleeding. Can I please get some pads? And I'm like, at this point, I'm going to cry thinking about it, y'all. I'm like in tears. They finally bring me some pads. No toilet paper. Okay. All right. So then nurses come in and out of our room constantly all day with their masks down like this. The ladies, the cleaning lady or the one cleaning lady that came in, I mean, she's got her mask down like this. What's the point in even wearing a mask if you're going to have it down? And she, like, is, like, d just dumping a little bit of water and, like, kind of mopping around. I mean, it was just the most piss-poor excuse job for for her job. I mean, it was just, it was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. And we're just looking at each other like, this is a joke, right? We are in a freaking joke. Like, somebody's going to come out and be like, oh, we got you. We pranked you, right? Like, this is not really happening. This is happening. Okay, now lunch comes again this day and it's wrong again. Um, so we finally get some toilet paper. Thank you, Jesus. This is like the next day at four o'clock or so. I mean, it's in the afternoon. Our saving grace on this day, I will say, is this nurse named Haley and she's amazing and I loved her. And if it wasn't for her, I would have lost my shit. I did lose my shit, to be honest with you. But I was literally crying and I was up on, like I was just miserable. What should have been like the best experience of our life and where we should have felt like taken care of by this hospital that we're going to pay tons of money to, we got the worst experience. It was just an absolute nightmare. Um, but the, the one saving grace in all of this was this lady named Haley and she was, I think the head nurse or whatever. And she just so apologetic and everything, but you know, there's only so much an apology will do. It's like, you're there. Like we seriously were like, we're going to just leave. And this Haley nurse was like, Brittany, you can't do that because your insurance won't cover it. If you don't just get discharged properly or whatever, then you're going to have a huge bill and you just don't want to do that. And I'm like, but this is a nightmare and I'm crying. I'm literally crying. Like, we just want to take our baby home and get the hell out of here. Like, I'm starving and I, like this place is disgusting and these the people coming in and out of here are disgusting with their masks off and the, it was just... Like, I felt unsafe. I did not feel safe. This is the next big thing that, like, really broke me was that night. This is, like, the second night, I guess. So, it's the last night that we're there. Um, it's, like, 2.30 in the morning. And she says, and this is a different nurse now. And she says, um, you know, it, it's going to take a while to bring everything in here for the bath. If you'll let us just take her down to the nursery and bathe her and I'm like okay if Corey goes and like I said I don't feel safe but I'm so exhausted at this point I'm like okay that's fine she she says I'm gonna clean the sh I'm gonna get her new sheets for her little you know her little thing like the baby's on like this little it looks like a kitchen island or something it's like this little bar but anyway she takes the whole thing out she comes back she says I got you fresh sheets fresh everything you know restocked your baby thing and you're good to go okay great she leaves I'm feeding I'm like breastfeeding or something. It's like 3.30 in the morning. I'm so tired. I'm just like, ugh. Corey's trying to sleep on the couch. Um, and I go to burp her. And then I go to, I pull up in the drawer and there's a stack of like folded new spit cloths. I grab the one on top. I go to wipe her, the spit up off her face. And thank God I didn't touch her. I look down at the spit cloth. Y'all, this spit cloth has blood on it. Not my blood. You've given me a clean spit cloth to wipe my baby's face with it. And there's blood on this spit cloth. Oh my God. I lose my shit, y'all. I lost it. I went out to the room and I'm just like shaking. I'm like, how dare you bring me dirty rags to clean my baby's face with? <sighs> I'm like... Oh my God, woos hot. It's been three weeks and I'm still so mad about this. And um, so I walk outside and I help hold it up with this drop of blood on this cloth. And I hold it up and I'm like, I'm like, this is not my blood on this 
spit rag for my baby. Do not bring me dirty rags. Like, I'm so, I'm like trying to keep it together. Corey's like asleep when this happens. And I think he wakes up and was like, what happened? And I'm just shaking. He's like, oh my God, we got to get out of here. But um, we're supposed to be discharged the next day. At this point now, there's no more being nice or nothing. I'm ready to go. Like the nurse comes in the next morning and I'm like, get me out of here. I need to be discharged <laughs> immediately. Like I told her everything that happened and she looks, she's like mortified. And I'm just like, this place is a joke. Do not, do not go to Grandview Medical Center for anything, for anything. Don't waste your time. Don't put yourself through that experience. It was an absolute nightmare. I'm just mortified by that whole experience. What should have been like the best days of, the best couple of days and just being able to just really enjoy her. We were more frustrated, hungry, sad, pissed off about the hospital we were in, so. There is my birth story. The real deal. This is what happened. I didn't vlog a lot while I was there because I was just so mad. I wasn't in the right headspace. But that was my experience, folks. That's what happened to us. Thank God we got this beautiful little baby out of the whole ordeal. So, you know, at the end of the day, we got what we went in there for. Um, and she's okay. She's safe. Thank God I didn't get somebody else's blood on her. But yeah, that's what happened, folks. That, that was my horror story from my hospital visit and uh, if you have a horror story if something bad happened to you leave it in the comments tell me i'm not alone in this has anybody else ever been through something so traumatic god i have to have another baby now so i can like redeem myself from this horrible birth story but um but yeah that's what happened guys thank you so much for watching i can't believe that she has let me do this vlog Sophia is over here. She's probably throwing chicken nuggets with ketchup all over the house on this side that you can't see, but she's over there and she's chilling. She's doing good and I'm really excited about our next vlog where I will give you an update on this one, that one, what it's been like having two, and everything else in between. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see y'all on the next one. Peace.